The kitchen. Surely no greater a canvas to display one's work will ever exist. Begin by heating the skillet. Careful now, it's hot to the touch. Then add the mushroom piece by succulent piece. Next, sit back and watch as it nears the perfect golden brown. Of course, it all comes down to presentation. Some fall foliage to match the season. A sprig of green to lift the mood. Perhaps something of the floral essence too? I'm feeling creative. Now, there's nothing left but to enjoy the fruit of all your labor. Go on, pal. It's time to dig in. already? Hmm. Say, you don't seem to be feeling well. Don't worry. It's just the change taking hold. After all, you are what you need. Okay, stop. We all know that's not the way it works. But if that's not the way it works, what is the way it works? How is it that we're made from the food that we eat, but at the same time, totally different from the food that we eat? Well, hopefully. Let's go back to our chicken of the woods mushroom. I mean, really go back. Like, we'll have to start by proving that it's not a plant. And for that, we'll do a simple experiment. But first, some background. Plants are made almost entirely from an array of carbohydrates. The body of a plant consists mostly of cellulose, but it also holds energy stores in the form of starch. Storing starch for energy reserves is something very plant-like. In fact, non-plants have to convert any starch that they store into a molecule called glycogen, which in animals is eventually converted to fat. So here's the hypothesis. We know that plants store their energy as starch. If the mushroom also stores its energy as starch, it's at least partially plant-like. But if it doesn't, that means it isn't plant-like at all. We can test this with a basic indicator. In this experiment, we'll use iodine as an indicator, chicken of the woods mushroom as our experimental focus, wood of the woods as our control, and some straight-up cornstarch as a backup control. When iodine and starch come into contact, a reaction takes place and a blue-black color is produced. We'll begin by doing this with the known starch, again to reinforce the standard known results. Next, we'll apply iodine directly to the woods. Because wood is a plant matter, we can expect that it contains starch, and the black in color produced confirms as much. Lastly, let's add iodine to the mushroom. Notice that the iodine is staying brown. No color change reaction is taking place, indicating that the starch is not present in the mushroom sample. Again, the wood turned black, meaning it was a starch-bearing plant, and the mushroom did not, confirming that it is in fact not a plant. But of course, we already knew that. You can pick up any basic science text and without much effort learn that mushrooms are an entirely different kingdom than plants, that being fungi. But sometimes knowing just doesn't count for much. In some cases, the real goal should be to understand. So how does the mushroom, an absolute substrate feeder who only eats what it grows on, become its own thing? Well, this is where two critical biological processes come into play. For this demonstration, I'll have to introduce a few key players. First is water. More specifically, we're looking at it in its molecular form, H2O. Then we have monomers. 
These are the basic form of any life essential molecule. Several monomers can be grouped together to form a polymer, which enables more complex and varied life functions to happen. After that, we have bonds, which are the connecting points between molecules, and finally my hands, which you won't see, represent enzymes, the biological catalysts running the show from behind the scenes. We'll begin with hydrolysis, the deconstruction of a polymer. Now, when I say polymer, I'm really talking about the primary resource in any food type. Let's use the tree that the mushroom was growing on for example. The mushroom was feeding on the polymer cellulose. In hydrolysis, water molecules are used to break or lyse the bond between two connected monomers. These monomers, once removed, become available resources for use towards constructing or reconstructing a new polymer of any other sort. So, how does that happen? Well, here comes the alternate process, dehydration synthesis. In this sequence, the components of water molecules are stripped from the bonding sites of a monomer. It is then arranged with one or more other monomers to form a desired polymer. Remember that monomers tend to be simple and basic, but polymers can be vast and have great potential. Even slight alterations in their build can result in a drastically different molecule, which is part of why life on Earth is so diverse. So if a mushroom is growing on wood, it's not becoming wood. It's breaking down the wood cellulose through hydrolysis and recombining it through dehydration synthesis into an assortment of things, glycogen and sugar to form energy, and various other molecules throughout its life. Now you know why a person can eat a mushroom and become a person. And a mushroom can eat wood to become a mushroom. But wood, where does wood come from? How does a tree get so big? At risk of using the same line twice, what does it eat?